What an exciting time it's been ever since Celestron released their first ever smart scope, the Celestron Origin here. I've taken so many great images. It's so easy to use with a smartphone. The optics are excellent at f2.2. It's fast, it's a rasa, and it's so easy to transport and I can go to dark sites just as I please. There's only one disadvantage with this telescope, and that is when you image closer and closer to the zenith. So what happens there? Well, as I point up, the field rotation, that is the rotation of your object with respect to the camera view, just increases rapidly. So Celestron this year has given us an upgrade for the advanced imager. And this upgrade is to add a wedge to this mount. And that turns the Celestron Origin smart scope into a traditional equatorial mount telescope. So with an equatorial mount, you are aligning the telescope with the Earth's axis, which we are not doing in the traditional altitude azimuth setup. Just a quick note on the assembly to the equatorial mount. It's very straightforward. Start with the tripod itself and attach the wedge with three thumb screws, rather straightforward. And then you take the fork mount and you can attach that with three bolt screws and you just tighten it. That's it. Then attach the OTA, attach the cables again as you're used to and you're ready to go. Then you just have to set the wedge to the correct latitude which you have. You just loosen the two latitude knobs and then adjust this big screw until the latitude matches the scale. And the final thing is we just want to orientate the telescope correctly so it's aligned with the Earth's axis. So if you're on the northern hemisphere, you can do that simply with a compass and you get it roughly within five degrees correctly. And you can do the same in the southern hemisphere pointing south. By the way, in the northern hemisphere, which we'll, we can use later for rough alignment, we can use Polaris. In the southern hemisphere, you can use the southern cross together with the two pointers to get you the southern direction. Also, don't forget to level the telescope. Okay, it's night time. We've got a clear sky. I'm super excited to show you now the smart scope origin on an equatorial wedge for the first time. So let's get going. So the first thing we need to do is just to switch on the power. Oh, that reminds me the power adapter, right? There's a power adapter and you can actually use that to power the origin beside the battery for the whole night if you wish to. However, at latitudes like 50 degrees, in fact, everything that's larger than 35 degrees, beware because the power adapter from the power source can actually be pinched due to the steep angle of the wedge. In order to prevent that, you can get a right angle adapter that'll make, make it possible for the mount to rotate without getting pinched in the wedge. There's more description in the manual, which you will find below in a link. So we just have to wait a moment for it to power on. I've taken the uh, lens cap or the hood off already because that's the common mistake. And we're just going to wait for it to power up. In the meantime, I'm going to start the Origin app. And the Origin app, of course, believes now that it is an alt as mode. So let's wait a moment. I'm using the home Wi-Fi here, by the way. And it's just starting. I'm just going to say cancel initialization for a moment. I'm going to go, in fact, into the menu here and into settings. And then I'm going to go to advanced settings. And then you will see here's a switch. You need to have the latest update of the Origin app. I'm using, by the way, an iPhone here. And switch on using equatorial wedge. That's really important. Okay. So we go back now into the menu, and then we'll say reinitialize. So let's have a look and see what it is looking at at the moment. At the moment it's focusing, we're all used to that. Okay, that seems to have gone very well. It has now orientated itself and says run polar alignment. So that is the key thing that we now align the equatorial wedge with the, with the axis of the Earth. So I'm going to say run polar alignment. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to see here run polar alignment. 
I'm going to click on here. And here you can see a bullseye. Now, I have been a little bit lucky because I just happened to have hit it. So we're very close. So all you have to do now is you have to take the altitude knob and the azimuth knobs and um, just play around with it. By the way, just beware that when you uh, turn here on the azimuth uh, knobs that the bolts here are loosened so that you can actually rotate it. Later you can tighten them again, but it certainly helps. So I've already done that. So we just I'm going to, just going to loosen them and you have to always wait a little bit because it jumps back to the center and I'm going to just tighten one and see what the effect is. Just wait a little bit. Now this is already fairly accurate. It's actually quite good. Now, as far as accuracy is concerned, I think I went in the wrong direction here. I'm just going to try the other direction. So you loosen always the one uh, bolt and you turn the other thumb bolt until you get there. So this is ob obviously the right direction now. There we go. Okay, so that looks fine. And now we can do the same for the latitude and just loosen, uh, sorry, the altitude knobs. And I'm just going to loosen them a bit and just turn this in one direction and see what happens. And that's good enough. So I'm going to tighten them again. So now we can say end polar alignment. And now it's going to reinitialize because it now knows exactly where the Earth's axis is. So it just needs to do a little bit of alignment and then we're ready to go. And it's so easy. Okay, so now we've done everything. Now we say don't polar align because we don't need to do this again. We're actually good to go. And now the excitement starts because we can go and image at the zenith. And I'm going to show you that. So let's go and do M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. M51 here, search for it. You see, that's quite high, 86 degrees. And that is perfect. So all I say now is center. Beautiful, and it says Whirlpool Galaxy. So now I'm actually going to use a manual exposure. So let's go there. I'm going to say exposure, and I'm just going to change that here to 30 seconds. And so let's close that. And I'm going to go to the ISO settings too. And I'm going to, yeah, let's leave that at 200. So again, we've got 30 seconds exposure and an ISO of 200. So let's go and expose. Okay, and I'm going to stop at 300 seconds, which is five minutes. So I'm just going to say download and save here. And that'll give the final image. And there we go. I hope you found this easy and exciting. The wedge brings us to the next level and we can now image at the zenith, we can image a lot longer, and the stars will definitely get a lot sharper. Well, there's one more exciting thing I'd love to share with you, and that is a really useful upgrade, is to put the StarSense Auto Guider, which is a guider, and that really increases the image quality because it takes care of irregularities in the mechanics as well as some misalignment in the polar alignment. So it's very easy to mount. There's a special mounting bracket that is supplied and there are two screws and you just mount it at the back. There's some instructions in the manual and you just connect the cable. There's one cable, put it into the second auxiliary port. You can see that it's connected here in the back by the illuminated red ring and you're good to go. So let's just do a quick test with that. I'm going to choose M51 here, center, and it's going to go to M51 at the moment. Okay, it says ready to image. Now go to the eye and you'll see information. So here you can see general how much battery I still have and below that is the auto guider. You can see it's idling at the moment so it is definitely connected. It will only start guiding once we take an image. So let's do that. I'm going to take an image here, click on the image icon here. I'm just going to click on that small upward arrow because you can see I can toggle here between auto on the left here and manual. I'm going to to manual exposure and if I click on the exposure settings, I've done it here for 60 seconds, so I'm going to leave that. And I've also got the eyes on 200, and let's go and image. And go into the guider and see whether it starts guiding. And you can see, in this case, it has already started guiding. Sometimes the first time you'll have to wait a little bit longer. And you can see 
it at the moment has locked onto nine or seven guide stars and it also gives you a quality score. At the moment I've got some high clouds so the quality isn't great. Still it's doing a great job in guiding. And whilst we wait for the first exposure, I can really recommend using the StarSense Auto Guider when you put in the Nebula filter. The Nebula filter gives you excellent contrast. And here's our first image, so I'm going to just download this and save it. On that note, I wish you very happy imaging, and if you get a chance to test the StarSense Auto Guider, do it. It really enhances things. You can still take the whole Celestron Origin out into dark sites and really get the best out of all worlds. Happy imaging and good luck.